Sort of belongs in a museum. Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. We have a guest with us today. It's Eric. Hey. From Core Geek Creations. Creations, yes. Yeah. So Eric brought with him a little <clears throat> project he's been working on. In fact, I've had mine for a little while. Eric gave me this sort of Athena casting and figured the only way I'm ever going to paint it is if uh, you show up and help me. Yeah, because it was uh, more than just a little while. So, How long ago was it? Uh, a year, maybe? Maybe a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> not almost, even, almost two years, I think. Yeah, not even close to the longest <laughs> I've had a kit unpainted. Oh, oh no, no, no. So anyway, today, Eric and I are going to team up. You've got one prepped and ready to go. I do. I've got one prepped and ready to go. We have a variety of metallic finishes that we want to try. We're going to do a little bit of experimenting on some test pieces here and then we're going to use those techniques to each finish our own sword. So that's what we got going on. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's dive right in. First, talk about the prep work. For metallic finishes, usually your base coat should be a shiny black finish. What did you do to get a shiny black finish on yours? So for the one that I'm doing today, it's just a base of Createx gloss. Mm -hmm. um, I also clear coated it because I've done this metallic finish before, the graphite powder, and it works really well with the gloss over the top of it. Right. So I did similar. I have some Createx uh, black. This is just a, an acrylic paint. I went over one dust coating, so like a light dusting, and then I went over with a heavier wet coat. Now the difference is you put a gloss clear coat on that. Yeah. I did not, and now that I'm comparing them, I think I think I should have. <laughs> it's just a little more shiny. But hey, for the purposes of testing, uh, you know, we'll get an idea of what the, the difference are. Yeah. You know? All right, let's take a look at what we have to work with. This is what I use for my base coat. Really, any glossy black finish should work. This is just what I had. Although to note, on the back here, it does recommend a 40 to 50 PSI with the airbrush. I didn't realize that until I read this. And when I cranked it up, it worked a lot better. So make sure you read your jars of paint for proper technique. So this is with two coats of just the black, but what'd you do on yours that's a little different? I think I did three coats of the Createx gloss, mm -hmm. and then it's also a gloss acrylic over the top of that. Uh, right. Two coats of that as well. Very good. So this only has really like two layers of paint, and this has closer to five. Yeah, and then did you prime that one at all? I did. You did, okay, yeah, because yeah, this was primed as well. Yeah. So um, we'll start working on our finishes, do some tests, and then we'll compare them again later. These are my test pieces. These are just some resin castings. I prime them and then I hit them with a couple of coats of this stuff right here. And we're gonna test some of the finishes on them. We're gonna try a couple of different powders. Now, I was recommended this stuff here, a metalizer powder. I also have just a graphite stick. I also have this stuff from the hardware store, more graphite, and you brought. I brought this uh, graphite powder that you can buy on eBay. Perfect. My hunch is that they're all exactly the same thing. I, I have a feeling they are. But let's try some of them out and see how they work. So I'm gonna start with the, the the fancy stuff here that I had to order, I believe, from the UK. Uh, but it looks like wow, all the way from the UK, and it I know. looks almost exactly. It looks like... very similar. <laughs> uh, what did this cost? I want to say this was like less than twenty bucks. Yeah. So with shipping. With shipping, this yeah. was definitely more than twenty bucks. Yeah. I think I, I would. Have, I, I, would I, actually I bought, have I bought it a while back, so I don't quite remember. Now this black finish is something that I uh, painted about half an hour ago and I did not put any sort of a clear coat on it. So just so everyone knows where we are. So results will vary as yeah. well sheen. Right, this does not have that high gloss you got with that clear coat. I'm gonna blow away the extra. Yeah, blow it. And the idea is you apply it like that and, and then, then you give it a little bit of a buff. And then buff it up. With a little buffing pad. Ooh, well that is nice. Yeah. And does look nice. Yeah, there you go. So are we doing this one next? Yeah, so you give that one a go. Okay, so here's the cheap eBay powder. Give that a good old buff. And I think the texture you're seeing is mostly from the paint. Yeah, yeah, these these so, test models were not prepped in And those look... I would say I, identical. I say it, yeah, yeah, <laughs> completely identical. All right, let's try... I don't think you can tell the difference. We have, again, this is just from the, like the lock 
smithing area at the hardware store. Also a graphite powder, so I'm gonna try that one over here. Is that like a gel? No, it's a or powder. Or is it just a powder? It just comes in a tube. Oh, weird. Oh, it's just like really flaky. Yeah. Where's this? Oh other? boy, I got some over there. That might that yeah. might ruin our results. This actually looks like it is a much bigger grit. Yeah, it's like a visible chunk. Yeah, that. It, it almost looks like it's gonna um, scrape your paint. Yeah. Your base. Okay, so this might not be effective. <laughs> Chunky metal, not exactly the... Uh, no, let's give it a buff and see how it looks. I play bass for chunky metal. <laughs> and, well, you know, I mean, it it's, it's not worked. bad, but... And my guess is this is probably just a less refined that. Yeah, yeah. it's the same material. It's probably still graphite. It's just a... a yeah, a just lower grit, I guess. Gritty. So then, graphite. could you uh, scrape up a chunk of... Oh yeah, are we doing a... So this is the super low budget version. You just buy graphite, graphite rub. or... You could probably do this with a pencil, with just a normal pencil. Yeah, I've done it with pencils before. Yeah. I'm just gonna do this. Yep. Yeah, that's looking pretty promising. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's not as, um, not as deep. It's like a shine, I mm -hmm. can tell already. There you go. Not that bad. Looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it looks okay. So if you're in a pinch and you just have a pencil, you could totally use sandpaper and make your own. But I really think if you're going for the economy route and you want a good finish, the big bucket that you've got right there yeah. is the way to go. So you're thinking about using that on your sword blade? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun to showcase. Yeah. We do have a couple of other bits here and I just want to show some of the stuff I want to try, including alkali lacquer. So this is a brass and then I have a steel here. And I'm going to try those with the airbrush on both of these fellas. So these are the two all clads we did. This is the steel and this is the polished brass. Now, what is your sword? This one was done with all clad, but this was uh, all clad's pale gold. Right, very similar. But they're very similar yeah. in color. Yeah. Um, then this one's got a clear coat over it. Yeah. Uh, also yes. these two here, the gloss black was shiny, but not super shiny. I think if we had done like you did and put a gloss coat down before doing these, we get a little bit more of metallic shine. Uh, but we can see pretty great looking gold. Yeah. Uh, the steel is pretty dark and not as shiny as some of the other ones. Yeah, it's a little more uh, gunmetal than I, yeah, expect, it I is. expected it to look. Uh, which is cool, but I wanna redo this. I'm just gonna paint over it with this stuff here, which is crazy shiny. Super, super shiny chrome. Yeah, because I'm considering using this on my blade. So let's give this a shot and see how it looks. So this is the Molotow paint over the uh, steel and it's super, super shiny. Actually, it's definitely not dry yet. You can see I touched it right there. Or you know what? It could be that this paint doesn't get along with, with the, the, the lacquer below it. Yeah, the lacquer. I bet that's what happened. I've used this paint before and this has a little bit of texture on it. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite as glossy. It's not as glossy as it could but be, yeah. But that Molto will almost, I mean, it's probably the most convincing paint chrome I've ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's up there for sure. Uh, the last thing we want to test before we dive into our swords is a clear coat for these. I've got several set up and we'll try uh, one on each one of them. The idea here is that we want a clear coat that protects this finish but doesn't dull that shine. So one of my favorites is this stuff from Testers. This metalizer sealer is pretty great. Um, Allclad has their own, which is this uh, aqua gloss or their cle clear coat with K's. That's pretty good. Uh, and I've never quite tried this, but I've heard it uh, recommended frequently, this Pledge Floor Care. It used to be called Future Floor Finish. Future, future yeah. In fact, but, uh, I think I have a... Yeah. So we're going to try these on here it. and see which one we like. Cool. All right. Test completed with some results. So so this is bare. Um, this is kind of what the graphite finish was that we were going for there. This is with the metalizer sealer here, and I think it did do a really great job. Yeah, it doesn't seem to uh, dull it whatsoever. Yeah, I really dig this stuff. This might be better on other finishes, but it seems like it reacted weird with the Molotow paint. 
And then the aqua gloss is what? All clad. All clad, that's right. All clad uses on here. And that turned out pretty okay too. I think it'd be better if the base coat was a little shinier, but I could also put more coats of gloss on there to maybe give it a little more shine. Yep. For the finishes, I think I still want to try using this Molotov paint on my sword blade. I like this stuff for the clear coat, the metalizer stuff. So I might try and seal mine in, in that. I think the handle's gonna be like this and the blade's gonna be like that. What about for yours? I'm gonna just go bare with mine. With the powder. With the powder. Right? Yeah. And you're not gonna seal the powder. I'm not gonna seal the powder. Okay. Uh, although I will say the tester sealer over the powder looked great. It does look so, really good, yeah. So it's one of those things that uh, I haven't really used that in the field that much, like mm -hmm. in cons or anything like that. So it'd be interesting to see how things hold up without it. Right. And then uh, maybe if it seems like it needs to have some sealant, then knowing that that works over, well here, over yeah. the graphite. All right, and then what about for your handle? How are you gonna paint that? Uh, my handle, I'm going to do a mix of Tamiya's gold and bronze. All right. Which makes kind of a dark bronze. Ooh, X gold. X gold, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna try and paint my handle first because I know that the lacquers will dry quickly mm -hmm. and then we can go to lunch and then hopefully when we get back from lunch, it'll be dry enough that I can mask it and paint the blade. That's my plan. I think that'll work. I think it might work depending on what we get for lunch. True, true. <laughs> All right, let's get to painting. Getting ready to do my metallic coat here, but I gotta be honest, I'm a little envious of Eric's shine. So shiny. Before I do the brass lacquer, I'm gonna go over the black I have with this clear gloss clear. Hopefully get a little more gloss on that before the metal shine. Hey, while we're working on that painting, I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons over at patreon.com slash punished props. It's because of you that we're able to do these really fun projects with our friends in our fantastic shop. For real, we couldn't do this without you guys and I wanted to thank you. If you'd like to jump in on the fun and help us out a little bit, get yourself access to behind the scenes vlogs every single week, early access to all of our build videos and extra credit videos for all of those build videos, head on over to patreon.com slash punished props and consider tossing us a buck. Thank you so much for your support. Let's get back to painting. Some time has passed. We let our stuff dry for a while, went out and got lunch. Got some burgers. How's your burger? Delicious. Delicious burgers. And now it's time to do the next layers. It's been probably two hours and I think it's safe to mask, put masking tape on this part that I painted earlier. Eric is doing some hand painting. Are you trying to match a specific reference? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting close to what uh, the sword looks like in the movies. In the, movie. in the movies okay. that it's been. Gotcha. Uh, but I mean, obviously like with the gold one, you, you can paint it whatever you want. Sure, yeah. Uh, but for this one, I wanted to, to get eh, close to that. Cool. So I think for mine, what I'm gonna do next is really just focus on the blade. I'll keep the brass for now and maybe later, I'll go in and add a little bit more detail, but I'm gonna focus on the blade for now. Yeah, the beauty of the design is you can make it whatever you want it to be, yeah. so. So I'm gonna load up my airbrush with more of this Molotov paint and get to painting. You may have seen this thing in some previous videos. I just picked this up recently. It's for cleaning an airbrush. It's also a great stand. I like to use it so that I can just have this hanging right off the edge of the table. Do a little painting, put it back in there. To clean your airbrush, this is meant to run whatever your solvent is, so in this case I'm using alcohol to clean it out, into this container and then there's a little filter in here that hopefully filters out more of the nasty stuff. 
So I just have a little alcohol in there and I'm just spraying it in to run it through and drag any paint with it, hopefully. If you're using acrylic paints, um, they're water-based, you could just run water in here and you can fill the base up with water. Usually you wanna put whatever solvent you're using in the bottom of this container. I just put water in here, but if I was running a lot of alcohol, I'd probably put alcohol in there. Right now I'm just cleaning this paint out thoroughly because I'm gonna put a clear coat in here next. Ideally I would have a separate airbrush just for clear paints. I don't, so I'm making sure this is super, super clean before I go and put a clear coat in it. So I just put on, I think, two good layers of this paint, the Molto paint. I gotta tell you, this is probably the biggest thing I've done with this paint. It looks pretty great, but it is tricky to get a nice consistent shine all the way down. I think if I had a, a spray gun that put out more volume, I'd be in better shape so I could just cover all of it in one good pass. Having to go back and forth and feathering the, the edges of the strokes together, pretty challenging. So some spots look really super shiny and some spots look a little bit less so. So this stuff is awesome, but can be a little tricky to apply, especially for bigger things. So while my blade is drying, I'm gonna carefully pull the masking off the handle. And then I think, since Eric's doing all that really great detail work, I think I need to do a little bit of detail work on this handle, yeah. Can't be up class by this, this young upstart, this whippersnapper, this. You realize I'm like five years older I know. than you, right? <laughs> You're more than five years older than me, Eric. <laughs> so I had an idea, I wanted to color the bird here and I started painting the same bronze on it, that Tamiya, and it looks like this paint and this paint do not get along. It's getting kind of gummy. In fact, over here on this side, I thought I would just hit it with a little bit of rub and buff, and as I touched it, the paint just came right off. So I'm gonna kind of try and clean that off a tiny bit with rubbing alcohol, and then maybe just hit it with a little rub and buff. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. I got to the clear coat stage and I wanted to use this metalizer sealer, although in hindsight, I realized I didn't test this sealer on the Molotow paint. Uh, and I should have, because it definitely knocked the shine back like a lot. So this is what it was before, super, super shiny. And now it's just kind of more flat. I actually ran out of this, so I grabbed just a gloss clear lacquer and did the bottom, and that was a lot nicer. So I'll probably let all this dry, mask it off, and then hit this with my Molotow paint again, and then seal the whole thing with that gloss clear lacquer. That's just this stuff here. This is some Model Master I got at the hobby store. All right, I'm at a place now with this order, I just kind of have to stop. So this paint by itself looked pretty good. It's a little hard to apply it in a really good uh, even amount. So I think like a HVLP sprayer, maybe like a, a yeah. detail spray. It's, like, it's great on really small detail things. Oh yeah, so like when I put it on the tiny test piece, it was really easy to cover the whole thing all at once, but it's a little trickier on here. Now the reason why I sealed it, instead of just letting it dry with that really nice glossy finish, is I wanted to weather it with oil paints and those have a habit of taking paints like this and stripping them when you do your weathering. So I wanted to seal it and then weather it. Unfortunately, the sealing, even the this gloss lacquer that I got, that still dulled it quite a bit. So that shine's really kind of gone. And then I made a rookie mistake and I touched the wet paint right there. There's a big, big thumbprint right there. Oh no, That's on me. a rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just glad that Eric was here to see it. <laughs> so unfortunately, I just have to let that dry. There's not a lot you can do to fix that. So I'm gonna let that dry, probably sand it and repaint it a little bit. It looks pretty okay. If you just look at this side, it looks pretty okay. Uh, but I definitely can't weather it right now. And also, since I did a lot of kind of experimenting on here, there's like five coats of paint on there, and I don't think any of them are dry. <laughs> so I'm gonna call mine done for now, but let's see what Eric has cooking up on his sword. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> my handle is all painted. And, and it looks uh, gorgeous. Maybe if I had just been a little more patient like Eric. Well, Thanks. you know what they say, patience is a virtue. It's true. Next. And you know what I say. <laughs> Get it done now! I'm very impatient. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next we're gonna try out the graphite powder. All right, I'm excited to see this. Which we saw earlier. I'm just trying to get some of the shop dust off yeah. of this. I have a hunch that this is gonna look gorgeous and it doesn't have to dry. Yeah. It just kind of goes on. I do on. want to... Just to mask it so you I don't I just want to mask, yeah, because I don't really want it to look silvery. Mm -hmm. Mask there you go. that off a little bit first. Oh, 
Well, that's magic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty magical. You're not even gonna clear cut this, right? No. What? No. From what I know about it, according to the prop tarts, because mm -hmm. I learned about this technique on, on the prop tart group, um, it doesn't really require now, could you, what do you, top coat? I wonder if you um, tried to put some like oil paints on there, if that would have an impact. I don't think it would because I don't think the oil paints will bother the, because really the only paint on here is the Createx underneath, that right? That should be totally dry. Yeah. 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 So I, my guess is, so then let's take one of these pads and buff it. So what I did was um, I kind of gooped it on first with just a cotton ball. And then once that's rubbed in, I'm just going back over it again to buff it with one of these little buffing pads. You could probably use a cotton ball too, but since you guys have the pads, yeah, mine as well. These are for like, uh, normally for makeup. Boy, that does look pretty great. It really does. I mean, it's definitely a deeper chrome, yeah. like a dark, it's almost dark. like a black chrome. I wonder if you had like a glossy gray under there. And if it would make lighter, it like yeah. lighter, yeah, yeah, it's possible. I, I wonder. I haven't really experimented with it much. So there's. Yeah, that's awesome. There's the chrome side, and then there's the. Well, it has, it has the leftovers yeah. from the other side. But. Are you planning on doing any weathering on this at all? Yeah, not on the blade. Oh. Um, I do plan on the oil-based uh, weathering on the handle area. Yeah. Because it just really makes the paint pop more. Oh, it does. There's a spot missing right there. I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm not sure what. Let's see. Can I get it rubbed off there? There we go. Yeah. Might go. have been like my finger oil or something. Yeah, I wonder. So definitely with this though, the quality is going to depend on how good of a base coat you have. Yeah, that that you high know, gloss because, black. Yeah, yeah, because it gets all of its sheen from that black underneath. Yeah. Well, that's just great. I'm happy for you. <laughs> I'm happy for me as well. Should I just spray a random assortment of clear coats on there and see what happens? <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> With this polishing you're doing, what's kind of cool is the crevices aren't getting buffed. And they're going to have that dark. Yeah, gloss. so it already has dark in there. Yeah. So you don't really have to. I mean, you could go over it again with black acrylic or something. Yeah. To fill in the. But I don't but know if it's some, really. Some decent I don't know if it's really that necessary. Yeah. So and it does have good contrast to it. So. Yeah. We did an awful lot today on these yeah. swords. I learned a lot. I definitely learned that sometimes you need to be more patient and lots of testing is required when it comes to finishes, especially stuff you're not familiar with. So with this paint, a more even layer is necessary to get the best finish, uh, especially on any of these flat surfaces. If you don't get that finish really even, it becomes obvious because some spots are a little more cloudy than others. Yeah, it kind of flashes a little bit. Yeah, <clears throat> um, and then the finish, the clear coat for this becomes important too. Now what I probably should have done was spray a lot more of this on to get a really even finish with like a wider nozzle air gun. Yeah. And then just let that dry for like a couple days just make sure it's nice and dry. This stuff looks really good when you put a lot on, but there's a lot on there and it takes a long time to dry. Yeah, and you also run into issues with running too. Yeah, if you put so too much on, it'll start it, it to can, sag. It can sag. So, so. that's my thoughts it's... on how this turned out. At this point, for sure, it is not even close to dry. I'm just gonna have to leave it for a couple of days before I can do any more work on it. Yeah. Yours, Eric, let's talk, let's go through the whole process because this graphite technique is awesome and I'm totally convinced that this stuff I spent a lot of money on to import from the UK yeah, is just exactly powder. the same as graphite powder. So. Yeah. So what was the full, the full breakdown to get this shiny, shiny finish? So the full breakdown is um, a very smooth finish. Mm -hmm. I think, I think I only did this up to like 400. Yeah. So it wasn't like, so for sanding. So it wasn't like crazy, yeah. you know, like thousand grit or something. Um, a couple coats of primer, whether you prime and sand, prime and sand is totally up to you. Right. And then the gloss black, 
at least three coats. At least with the Createx, I've noticed like three coats is about what you need to get it nice and smooth. Then the gloss clear, you might be able to get away with not using gloss clear. Mm -hmm. But if that black coat is really shiny. If that black coat is really shiny, yeah. but the clear always just bumps it up like one one more level of one sheen. One more shine factor. And I think that the base is what, I mean, there's no paint on this other no. than the black. So that base black is really what gives that final look when you yeah. when you rub the graphite powder on there. If you look, it's just so ridiculously shiny. And then I just applied the graphite powder with cotton swabs and we mm -hmm. buffed it with one of your cotton pads. You could use cotton swabs for the whole thing. Absolutely. And you just buff it until it's uh, shiny, shiny. Just yeah. like just like that. As far as I know, it you know, I mean, I can rub my hand on it, and it doesn't, doesn't appear to be coming off on your hand. That gunk is from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> His hands were previously dirty. Yeah, yeah. And I've also read that um, with this finish, if it does kind of start to dull, you can just rebuff it with a little more powder. Awesome. And uh, graphite powder, and you're back to a nice finish again. So. That's fantastic. But the only thing I'd still want to do on this is do the oil paint weathering on it. Getting that oil paint in these crevices oh, on the braiding all and stuff. All that texture, it yeah. Just, yeah, just really, it really makes the the sculpting that I did on here uh, really pop and look realistic. So other than that, it's mine's pretty much done. That's fantastic. So, I yeah. love it. Uh, mine, I'm gonna wait for it to dry, give it a few days, and maybe give the blade painting another go. I might. Just do, do that. this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric, thanks so much for hanging out with us oh, in yeah. the shop today. Yeah, it's been a blast. Thank it's you blast. for the sword a you year bet. and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to finally paint it. Yeah. If people want to know more about what you've got going on, where can they go check it out? Uh, my website is coregeek.net. Mm -hmm. A geek as in a geek, not Corgi the dog. It gets confused a lot. Yeah. If you want to follow me on social media, I mostly do all my stuff on Instagram at this point. So Instagram's a place to find me if you want to interact or whatever. Awesome. So. Instagram.com slash Corgeek. We'll have links down in the description. We'll also have links to all the stuff that we use today. If you want to get some of it and try it out for yourself. I recommend a giant jar of graphite powder because that was great. And <laughs> yeah. if you don't have that, just crushing up a, a pencil and using yeah, that seemed to work pretty well. Yeah, because our test with that worked out pretty well too. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for hanging out with us in the shop today. Uh, as always, thank you to our patrons who help us keep the lights on around here. If you want access to some behind the scenes vlogs, some, what else do we do? Our extra credit videos and early access to our build videos like this one, you can go to patreon.com slash punish props and help us out. I'm a Patreon. You're a Patreon. I do, thank I so watch much, all Eric. the extra stuff. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, and we'll see you in the next build. Ha! <laughs> All right, I'm at a place now where I think I have to just kind of stop. Most likely. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> quiet on the set. It's hard to see in there. Dark like my ginger soul. <laughs> this is how mine turned out. <laughs> so I hope like and subscribe. Uh... <laughs> this is what we have over here for our all clads. This, Eric, this is the um, antique copper, I think. No, I'm sorry. Let me start all of that over again. Polished brass. None of those words were right. <laughs> Eric's name. Blooper! Yay! Uh, and Eric. Yes, this is okay. true.